I feel like I'm all in. Like I'm already blacklisted. What's Amazon gonna do? Blacklist me even more. I almost stopped programming, which is like something that I really love doing. Doing something to get blacklisted from big tech was like pretty like no brainer decision. We would just like fucking farm offers. I get in a lot of trouble at school. Didn't have a lot of friends like early in high school. My, my mom was always so worried about me and we would record them. And this would be like the most controversial tech demo of the year. And uh, maybe I'll end up in jail. Okay, I'm in Shake Shack right in front of Columbia University with Roy and Neil, who are the founders interview coder. And they're gonna give us their story. So we'll just get started with Roy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm Roy, uh, I built Interview Coder. I went to school and for a long time, I thought I was gonna be like an investment banker. So I got accepted my senior year early to Harvard University, but then went on a school field trip and I snuck out at like 1 a.m. Uh, there was a security, hotel security guard that caught me. We were out past curfew. I didn't realize there was a curfew, so I just tried to book it, but we got caught and uh, I ended up getting a suspension. Harvard got alerted of the suspension and then I got rescinded. Um, and that, that was kind of like a, like a super pivotal point in my life. My mom, we run like a college prep consulting business. So it was really big news when the, when the youngest son of the family got into Harvard and it would have been even bigger news if it got out that I got rescinded. So we just decided to like keep it completely under wraps. Um, so I spent like a year just locked up in my house with nothing to do. And I just didn't talk to anybody outside of my immediate family. Shit made me kind of crazy, honestly. Like like that, that's where I learned how to program. And, and it's where I, I learned that uh, it's probably what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I didn't even have the energy to doom scroll. I was just like, like I really thought I was going crazy inside my head. But after that, I kind of didn't get into any of the schools that I reapplied to. Um, somebody wrote a footnote in my application saying that I, I got rescinded from Harvard after I went like zero for like 22. Even after a year, we were still at this point where we didn't tell anybody. I went to community college in California. The intention here was to transfer to UC Berkeley. But at this point, I was out of like the traditional education system for so long that I kind of just thought maybe college isn't in my cards at all. And maybe like the, the, the out for me is just to get a job. That's when I started doing Lee Code extremely paranoidally seriously because I really thought this was my only out. Like I can't go to college anymore. So I ended up doing something like 600 Lee Code questions during this time. I was like top 2% of users globally. This was probably the most miserable experience I had programming. I mean, I spent 600 hours on the website and uh, I didn't enjoy a second of it. Like, like, like Lee Code was just a miserable, miserable experience. I reapplied again as transfer. Columbia was the only school that accepted me once again, but this is this is because um, my suspicion is that Columbia works on the coalition application rather than the common app for transfers. So there's like a different process entirely. I was just of the mindset that um, schooling is not for me. Like the world is changing as we know it and it's just time for me to build a company. So I, I came to Columbia and I talked to like maybe like 50 people I met. Every single smart person I met, do you want to build a company with me? Do you want to be my co-founder? And uh, Neil was like kind of the only person that said yes. So we ended up co-founding and we ended up being like a really good fit. We ended up building like pretty much everything together. Uh, Interview Coder, it just started out as like a side project. Um, so once we decided that, then it wasn't that risky of us to do this Interview Coder play where we definitely we would get blacklisted from all of big tech. And as soon as we saw that it, we had it working, we like immediately knew, holy shit, we're onto something big here. And that's when we started this like three month long marketing ploy where we would just like fucking farm offers we, and we would record them. And this would be like the most controversial tech demo of the year. Cause it would literally be us like, like recording ourselves cheating our way and like publicly blacklisting ourselves from all of big tech. We definitely got way more viral than I thought. I feel like I'm all in, like I'm already blacklisted. What's Amazon gonna do? Blacklist me even more. It, it's become more of a movement than anything and which is to get rid of leak code interviews. I mean, like I wasted 600 hours of my life. I almost stopped programming, which is like something that I really love doing because of this like stupid ass technical interview system. I think with the virality we have, like we actually have a genuine shot of taking it down. You wanna give me a quick overview of just like where you're from? How'd you come to Columbia? And then how'd you meet? Uh, I'm Neil. I'm from like a suburb of Dallas, like a pretty boring suburb of Dallas. Didn't have a lot of friends like or, like when I was like early in high school, I was like, spent so much time doing math and shit. Before I met Roy for the year before that, I, I thought I was gonna be a quant trader. And I did that. I had an interview at the end for some quant trading thing and it was like depressing as fuck. I, I like went and there was like, um, like everyone was like sitting, everyone on the trading floor was like, seemed very, very sad. And I was like, this this can help me my life. Like if I, if I continue with this path, like for the next five to 10 years, I'm not gonna be happy. And then thankfully in September, I met I met Roy. I, he looked at me and said, you wanna start a company? I think I think he looked at me cause he just said I look smart. Nothing came from that initial moment, but we started doing like a lot, a lot of small things together. I didn't really go anywhere, but the, the big takeaway was that like we were a very good co-founder fit and we worked very well together. I think at some point we decided we're gonna go like all in on startups. And at that point, like doing something to get blacklisted from big tech was like a pretty like no brainer decision. It was like not even like a consideration. A lot of questions from these stories. So one thing that's interesting is your parents, your family runs this business where you couldn't even tell people you got rescinded from yeah. Harvard, but now you're on the internet basically getting publicly blacklisted. That feels like a dichotomy. I mean, what do your parents think about this? How yeah. what how's that switch? The parents are really nervous. Was that text message that your mom sent you real by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she she didn't even know that 
all of this was happening until like two days ago. And then um, she kind of figured it out and she called me extremely nervous and anxious. But I think going through the whole Harvard Community College then back to Columbia saga, taught my parents like to just trust in me that I can figure things out. I've, I've always been like a pretty wild kid. Like I'd always just do like kind of whatever the fuck I wanted and I get in a lot of trouble at school. My, my mom was always so worried about me. But when I got into Harvard the first time, she really eased up a lot. And uh, maybe I'll end up in jail, but I, I think she trusts me. You feel like you live for the plot? Me? Yeah, I mean, there's like there's like a quote, do whatever makes the best story. And I feel, I feel like that, that's what's like driven pretty much every single decision that's led to me being here. And then quite similar for you, very interesting. I mean, quant, so, you know, getting blacklisted from quant seems like a very 360 from trying to be a quant trader. Yeah. Are you just kind of like, all right, that's it, fuck it for the rest of my life? I, I think before, Roy too worked at a startup last summer. We both worked at like startups last summer. It kind of highlighted to me that like, I, I would much rather work all day doing something I enjoyed versus like working even like a couple hours doing something I hated. Like, like there's no point, like the, what's the point? The point of life is to do something you enjoy. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense like, like to, to optimize so much so. So how'd you guys meet? Like when you first met, was it like, we're just gonna work together or whatever? Or were you like, I got this idea to take down leak code. Yeah, I mean, I, I was really just asking every smart Asian person that I found, like, hey, do you just want to start a company with me? Do you want to start a company with me? And then I think when Neil first met me, like, I, I think he thought I was weird or something. Like, we didn't actually end up working together until we met at a party. And then uh, we kind of like chilled at the party. And then we started, and, and then after that, we just started working on side projects. But then after one point, we just decided like, like we have the technical ability to build pretty much anything. Let's just uh, swing big here. What's the what's the thing we can do that would be super viral? And uh, it just immediately everything clicked for Interview Cutter. So yeah, walk me through the actual product. How hard was it to build? Is it kind of ironic where you used a bunch of LLMs to build the LLMs to take down interviews? Like, how did you build it? Was it hard? Especially very interesting, the undetectability is probably like the main draw. I think it took like a, like a week to build, a week to debug. We, we bridged together a lot of different things, but the actual technology behind it is like pretty simple. I mean, that's like the big shock factor we're trying to prove. The, the actual like screen share undetectability is like the, the framework we use, it's like like a line or two of code on like that framework to make stuff undetectable to screen sharing. There, there's some other stuff with like the, it's undetectable to keyboard shortcuts, undetectable to like active tab detection. There's like a couple of other features like that and like bridging those together kind of makes it so that it's undetectable. But like all in all, it's like very easy to make cheating software. I think it's like the takeaway. And I think that highlights how broken a process is. Core product was very shockingly simple to build. You're really just putting two pieces together that already exist. I think like just the existence of LLMs that like reasoning models that can solve any problem, yeah. those can be, apply to pretty much like like so many existing features in the world. We just put two existing technologies together and it really didn't, it didn't take much time at all. It seems like most of it, as you mentioned, is marketing, like getting it out there. And you went viral many times on Twitter and your YouTube video, was that planned? Were you just like throwing it and seeing what stuck? Yeah, everything, everything we did was pretty meticulously planned. We actually previously recorded a video for another company, but we had signed an NDA saying that we wouldn't like screenshot or screen record for that specific company. So we couldn't disclose that. So we had to wait a month, hope that I would get the Amazon internship interview and then actually re-record myself using it on Amazon. But but we knew that this would be like the big controversial tech demo. Um, we certainly didn't expect that it would be viral at this scale, but uh, like every single thing from the very first offer was was pretty meticulously planned. As soon as we had that aha moment of holy shit, this actually works. Yeah, we knew it would be big. Okay, so talk to me about Amazon. You did the whole thing, you put it online and then they rescinded the offer. How did they find it? They just found the video. Amazon actually didn't rescind the offer. Meta and Capital One rescinded my offers after hearing about the news, but almost as soon as I finished the Amazon interview and got the offer. Like I told them preemptively, like I, I rejected the offer preemptively because, because I sort of suspected that I'm going to post this. And once this goes public, then um, like I don't want to get into any legal implications. So I just told them like immediately, I've never had any intention of working at Amazon. But yeah, as soon as I recorded the video and posted it online, it went pretty viral because uh, it was like front and center on the landing page. Like I said, proof, like if you, if you want to see proof that this thing works, here's a full unedited technical interview between me and Amazon. And uh, that racked up like 20,000 views before someone must have sent it to Amazon. And then um, they caught wind and just told Columbia. And then how did just get a letter from Columbia? Uh, yeah, they, they just send me like, hey, somebody had reported something. You're getting like a, there's like a Dean's Discipline hearing that you're gonna have to attend. And they send me a file and then pretty shockingly on the file, or like, pretty unsurprisingly actually on the file, it's just this giant letter from Amazon just like complaining about like, oh, this kid built this cheating software. He needs to be reprimanded severely. Or there was like this heavy insinuation that Columbia, like Amazon is no longer gonna hire from Columbia. So you ask me, it's pretty fucking ridiculous. Yeah, are you, are you scared of like publicizing these legal documents? I mean, like what's Amazon gonna do? Blacklist me? What's Columbia are gonna do expel me like yeah the, the, the worst case for someone who wants to build startups is not actually that bad of a worst case in my opinion since i started using monday.com it's completely changed the way i stay on top of tasks projects and deadlines instead of juggling a million tabs prs design docs slack threads 
everything now lives in one organized workspace. It also integrates directly with tools like Google Drive and Slack, so the whole team stays in sync. And status updates happen automatically as work continues to move forward. What's been especially helpful working in a large company is how Monday.com keeps cross-functional teams aligned, whether it's coordinating with engineers, designers, or product managers. It makes it easy to manage complex projects with multiple stakeholders without anything slipping through the cracks. I've also set up custom views like Kanban boards, calendars, and tables, which makes sprint planning way smoother and keep the whole team on track. It's been a game changer for productivity and collaboration. If you're looking for a better way to manage your team's workflow, definitely check out monday.com. My viewers can actually get started for free using my link in the description. Just for the video, what offers did you get? Like just name all the companies and they were all through Interview Coder. Yes. So I have Capital One, TikTok, Meta, and Amazon. And you legit, like, you still interviewed even when you got offers. You were just like, I need more in case I get rescinded. Well, well, the actual logic was that we were literally just like farming these offers yeah. for the for the purpose of marketing. We kind of had this intuition that this would go viral, and uh, I think it played out the way that we hoped. And the companies rescinding it was just organic. Like, did they just found you without just they just, they just found you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just found me. That's crazy. Okay, and then now you just told me that you're actually going through some disciplinary hearings at Columbia. I read something about some Zoom final something like what's yeah, going on yeah so um initially we had this dean's disciplinary hearing where columbia was sort of asking does this violate academic integrity and this was like such a bullshit meeting because they couldn't prove like like technical interviews have nothing to do with classroom assignments so me creating a cheating tool for technical interviews really has nothing to do with columbia but they kind of like forced me into this hypothetical situation where i had to admit that um this tool could be used gigantically absurd and unrealistic hypothetical scenario that happened in columbia and then after forcing that admission out of me they used that to like leverage it into like putting me on probation but I, I, I thought that was so ridiculous. So I just kind of like like posted all the events online. Like what the fuck? They're just like reaching for a way to punish me and like 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 be on Amazon side rather than be on the side of the student. Yeah, I, I posted all this stuff, and now I have another disciplinary hearing that's coming up on Tuesday. They're they're mad that I posted the documents that I you know wasn't supposed to post. But um, I feel like it's just like worst case. I feel like this is a violation of my 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 First Amendment rights. Just like post like freedom of speech. And then I guess similar for you. I mean, interesting with the family. You're Indian. I'm Indian. How did your parents react to all this? They were they weren't happy. I guess yeah. Um, I, I guess like my mom's man concern was like the ethics behind it. They, they obviously disapproved a lot, but that, that kind of made me think a lot about like just kind of like the, the moral systems and ethics that they taught. Like ethics is important to me, but we very strongly feel like this is ethical and it kind of reframed my worldview in a sense to say like, hey, doing the doing the thing is like doing the thing that's like quote unquote right is not always ethical. Like if we allow like developer interviews to go on in the same way that they go on, is that really ethical the same way if we like allow developers to waste like millions and millions of hours? Like that is probably a greater evil than like one kid like cheating on an interview. And then I thought that one tweet where you kind of brain dumped a bunch of thoughts in February yeah. was really insightful. Kind of talk me through maybe the key takeaways from that and kind of how you are viewing the rest of your life or at least the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, after I posted this video, it didn't immediately go hyper viral. There was like a few weeks where just sort of nothing happened and we were receiving these letters from Columbia, like disciplinary hearing and I, I, I was just getting worried. Like every day I would wake up, check my email. I think like, oh, f when, when's the season to sis? When's the lawsuit coming? And at that time, I just didn't know where I was headed. So I made this really long brain dump tweet about my, my headspace at the time. This was about like two or three weeks ago. Like at, the, at that time, I'd already posted the video there was no going back i was getting disciplinary notices and I, I just knew that all this shit was going down and i knew that i was all in at that point but i didn't actually reap any rewards like it didn't go as viral as i hoped at the moment and i, I was just really fucking nervous like i went all in for something that didn't pan out the way that i expected and uh we were making some money but it wasn't enough money to be it wasn't like fucking money at all yeah it, like I, I was i was just super worried that i had thrown it all away and i wasn't actually gonna make it the way that i thought i could make it obviously i'm less worried now because uh it kind of kind of did do exactly as I hoped, but uh, it, it was just a stressful time. And I think that the biggest takeaway from that is you really have to just swing big. If you go all in, I think I think the, the universe rewards you. Cool, I guess that's a good segue to what's next. So is the goal to scale this to XXX ARR or something? Is it to just keep this as a pilot, goes viral as you can, and then the next thing, are you just gonna bootstrap a bunch of products? Do you wanna actually start a company? YC, do you wanna get VC funding? Are you actually gonna drop out? Like, come on, what, what are the plans? At this point, dropping out for the both of us is a no brainer I mean, Neil's already dropped out and I'm sort of just like, just like waiting to see if, if I get expelled or not. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to reveal too much, but I think Interview Coder, just the entire process has revealed a lot of insights to us that I think are not yet known to the startup world. So we're working on something very big, much, much, much bigger than Interview Coder, possibly the most ambitious version of Interview Coder. Yeah, that, that's coming soon. I think we made our point very clear with Interview Coder. If it would kill eCode interviews, then I think we've made our point. But we're on to much, much bigger and much, much more ambitious things. Let's say big tech pivots. They like, they bow down. They're like, you guys are right. We're so sorry. Yeah. Lead code's over. We're we can do it again. Come work for us. Are you just nah? Never again. You're on, on the startups. Yeah, yeah. There's 
At this point, there's no universe where I go work at big tech. I mean, the world is changing so fast. The entire social order, as we know it, is like shifting in front of our eyes. I feel like there's, um, if even if I got a job at big tech in five years, there's no guarantee that job would be stable. In fact, I'm almost certain that that job wouldn't be stable. I genuinely think that the most secure thing I can do for my future is like try and build a company when the action is so hot. Good. All right. Thanks, boys. Yeah, of course. Nice to meet you. Yeah, of course.